What's up guys? So I'm just going to go through some rotational kinematics review questions, show you the key and exactly how I work through all these problems. So the first question here is asking uh, through what angular distance is the sphere rotating during this time interval? So we know angular distance is given by theta, which is given by x over r, okay? And that's the linear relationships where we have linear x is going to be equal to r times the angular. So when I do this right here, I have the x distance as 0.12 centimeters because I moved the distance this far. I converted it to meters, 0.3. That's the point on the surface. That's the r. So we had this thing that was spinning, and out here was 0.3. So that is going to be 0.4 radians. For number two, it wants to know how many revolutions did it make? So there's a couple things I need here. First, I need time, like how far did, how long did it take to go that certain distance? So I remember that average V equals X over T. Okay, so now if I know that, then I know that T equals X over V. It was given an X of 18.5 meters and an average transitional speed of 40.2 uh, meters per second. So that means the T was 0.46 seconds. So this is how long it took to get to home plate. Then I converted this 46 seconds into minutes. And I did so by just multiplying it by one minute is 60 seconds. So that means this was 0 0.008 minutes. And I was told this thing's spinning at 1,560 revs per minute. So if I want to get rid of this 0 0.008 minutes, so I multiply that out and I get 12 revolutions. So they give you first, this is omega naught. It's slowed down, that's gonna be important. So this is gonna be alpha equals minus four rads per second squared. They wanna know the linear speed. Linear speed is equal to r times omega naught. r was given here as 0.5. Omega naught is given right here. So 125 rads per second times 0.45 meters gives me 56.3 meters per second. How much time elapses before the disc stops? Well, it's gonna to come to a stop, so that's gonna be a V final. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha T. So zero equals 125. Now this has to be a minus because it's slowing down. Minus 4t, so minus 125 divided by minus 4t is t. t equals 31.3 seconds. Through what angle did the disc rotate during this time? So we know that the angle traveled is going to be w naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared. I'm going to leave out units just to save space. 125, that was given right here as omega naught times 31.3 seconds, minus, once again, a minus, because I am slowing down, minus one half alpha rads per second squared times T squared, 31.3 seconds. That is going to equal this theta, and this guy's has to be in radians. So it, my math came to 1954, but this is close enough. So guys, this right here is a diameter. So we have to remember R is really 0.6 meters and revs per minute needs to be converted into radians per second. So I did that, that equals 22.5 rads per second. If you don't know how I did that, I just went 215 revs per minute. I got rid of the minutes over seconds by saying one is 60 seconds times 2 pi rads is revs. So essentially to go from revolutions per minute to radians per second, we gotta get rid of this. 215 times 2 pi divided by 60. So given that information now, I can start to solve. Linear speed is V equals R times omega. So 0.6 meters times 22.5 rad per second that equals 13.5 meters per second. Number seven, once again, I'm gonna to have to convert this the exact same way. This is really 95 rads per second. And they wanna know the angular acceleration alpha is just a change 
in omega divided by t. Change is omega final minus omega initial over t. 95 minus 22.5 divided by 60 seconds. That gives you b, 1.22 rads per second. Number eight asks for a linear distance. So they're going to want to do some sort of x equals r theta, but we need to know theta. So theta equals omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared, 22.5 times 60 seconds plus one half times 1.22, which is alpha radian per second squared times 60 squared. That's the time. So that's from this formula right here. That's going to equal theta. So theta comes out to 3,546 3, radians. So then when you multiply that by r, which is 0.6 meters, you get a linear distance equal to 2128, which for me is close enough to a. This one, guys, I already converted. So I did 31.4 rads per second. So this is going to be your initial. So this is omega initial to a ch change in speed of this. So this is going to be 23 rads per second. That's going to be omega final. And this must be converted to 60 seconds. So now that all my conversions are good, I can continue on. Meters is the appropriate for R. So that's going to be fine. Find the magnitude of the angular acceleration of the rotor. So for this one, I just did V final equals V initial plus alpha T. 23.6 is going to be my final. My initial was 31.4 plus alpha, which I want to solve for times 60. My alpha comes to 0.13, but guys, this is going to be a negative. All right. So remember, we are going to we're going from this to this, so we're slowing down. So if I have to use alpha moving forward, this is really going to be a minus. The next thing I want to know is what's the linear acceleration at the tip of the motor? So the linear acceleration A is equal to R alpha something you need to memorize. So that's going to be equal to the radius, 2.95 meters times minus 0.131 rads per second squared, which is going to be 0.386 meters per second squared. This math would really come to minus, and you're like, Finn, why don't we have any minus here? They just fast for the magnitude. And magnitude does not account for direction, so we're okay here just putting that. The angular distance, guys, we know angular distance is theta. That's going to be equal to omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. I'm going to plug in without units, 31.4 times 60 plus one half. This time, very important to put the minus 0 0.131 times 60 squared and that answer is going to be theta. Theta comes to 1650 rads. When we convert this to rads per minute we get 193.7 rad per second. This is revs per minute to rads per second counterclockwise so that means that could be a positive number. Is brought to rest in three minutes so this seems to be 180 seconds. Now we're ready to move forward. Alpha is a change in omega over t. We had a change in omega of 193.7 rads per second. And it did this in 180 seconds. So it came to 1.08. And we need to know the direction here. Well, the direction of the velocity is going this way. So the right-hand rule would tell us out of the page. But the acceleration is opposite that because it's slowing it down. So now I have an into the page if I wrap, use the right hand rule. So that is going to go into the page. The angular displacement, once again, is just going to be theta equals w naught t plus one half a t squared. 193.7 times 180 minus one half 1 1.08 times 180 squared. That equals 17,370 when I do my math, which is going to be close to this number here. It still travels in this direction, so the theta is going to be this way. So if you use the right-hand rule, that's going to be out of the page. 
uh, the linear speed V is equal to RW. So that is going to be equal to 0.25 meters times 1.2 rads per second. We get ourselves 0.3 meters per second. If it accelerates to 2 rads per second counterclockwise, so this is opposite this, during the 5 second interval, what is the angular displacement? So for angular displacement, I know omega naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared, but I do not know alpha. Alpha is a change in w over t. Now this change in w, that's a big deal. Guys, it's not 2 minus 1.2 is 0.8. The change is actually equal to 3.2 rads per second divided by 5. So the alpha came to 0.64 rads per second squared. So now when I go back and plug in, I get my theta to actually be 2 rads. Okay, and once again, at the end, it's moving counterclockwise. So theta is going counterclockwise. So if I'm wrap my hand, my right hand rule, my fingers go in the direction to rad out of the page. So number 16, the initial angular velocity. If V equals R omega, omega equals V over R. My initial speed was 8.4. The diameter of this was 0.6. So in all actuality, the radius was 0.34 meters. That gives me an initial speed of 24.7 rads per second. The total amount of revolutions it makes before it comes to rest. Now revolutions can be converted from theta, which equals x over r. So we have 115 meters divided by 0.34. We can say that is equal to 338 rads. And then we can say that 338 rads can be converted by putting rads down here and revs up top. And one rev is 2 pi radians. So that means in revolutions, this comes to 53.8 revs. Now, 18 and 19 kind of come together because to know alpha, you need to know delta W divided by T. But I don't know T here. So I'm going to find out how long to take for the bicycle to stop. And I'm going to use the average velocity is equal to distance over time. Now the average velocity here is going to be V final plus V initial over 2 equals X over T. So V final is 0. This is 8.4. So if you take 8.4 divided by 2, that is going to equal 115, the distance traveled by t. t is going to come to 27.4 seconds. So that's actually the answer for number 19. That can now be applied to here, where I have the change in speed. So the change in speed now, it's going to go from our initial 24.7 divided by 27.4. That's going to be 0 0.901 rads per second squared. So that's how you figure out number 18. Number 20 is going to be using omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t, which is then going to be, if this is initially at rest, we can then just say that 0 0.06, which is alpha, times 8, which is the amount of time, is going to be 0 0.48 rads per second. What is the linear speed? The linear speed is V equals R omega. So now we have the R, which is given. So 2.5 times 0.48, which we just solved for, which is going to be 1.2 meters per second. The tangential acceleration can be solved from the angular acceleration alpha. So A equals R alpha, which is 2.5 times 0.06, which is going to be equal to 0.15 meters per second squared. Now I want to start to draw this because um, I'm going to draw like just the part of the path here because this I know this is going to help. So we just found out the tangential. So we just found out A tangential to be equal to 0.15 meters per second squared. That's going to be different than the centripetal acceleration. 
AC is equal to V squared over R. We found that earlier in the year. But V is equal to R omega. So we're going to say R omega squared over R. Okay? And what that's going to end up equaling is going to be omega squared times R is going to be the AC. So when we do that math, we get 0.576 meters per second squared. So that's this one right here. That's AC. So now when we solve for the total linear, it's really going to be the resultant here. This is going to be a total. So if I have this vector here, and then over here is really 0.15, I can do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C squared is going to be my total linear acceleration. Okay, so C comes to 0.6 meters per second squared, and now they need to know what the theta is. So this is opposite in the adjacent. So I can say that theta is equal to the inverse tan of the opposite, 0.15, divided by 0.576. And we can put this, we have to put our calculators in radians, and then we'll get that 25 rad. All right, guys, I hope that helped. If you have any additional questions, leave them down in the comments below.